My name is William Justice and welcome to my kitchen. You may be asking yourself, why am I here and what does being in the kitchen have to do with DaVinci Resolve and creating shapes? We're going to be baking some cookies. Why would we do that? Because I like cookies. But more importantly, we can learn something about creating shapes in Resolve by baking cookies. Shapes in Resolve are a bit different than what you may be used to. If you're new to masks, think of them as cookie cutters. When you hear the term mask, think cookie cutter. The dough is our background or media clip, and these cookie cutters, well, these are our masks. We can create some simple shapes with cutouts. We can use multiple cutouts to create a shape, or we can combine cutouts to create new shapes. This is exactly what you do when you create shapes in Resolve. Today, we're gonna create a few basic shapes and then learn how to combine the shapes or cookie cutter masks to create more complex shapes. Then I'm gonna show you my shape shifter tool to create some really crazy looking awesome shapes. The shape shifter is really easy to use and it's gonna make you look like you have some awesome and serious animation skills. Subscribe to my channel for videos about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, and a whole lot more. If you like this video, click the like button below. I'd really appreciate it. I always love hearing what you think about my videos. So if you have any comments, questions, or just general feedback, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's make some shapes. We're gonna start with a background. We're gonna take the background and put it into the node area and connect it up to the media out. So we have a nice black background. We're gonna take another background and put it in the node area, take the output of that background and merge it in with the first background. And let's change that background color. Okay, so we have a gradient background sitting on top of a black background. So if we go to the merge and move the gradient out of the way, maybe make it a little bit smaller, you'll see that we have this gradient sitting on top of the black. So now to create shapes, we just need to use these mask options to select which part of the gradient background we want to be seen. So remember these masks act just like cookie cutters and we can punch out whatever shape we want to out of the gradient background. So in Fusion, any node that has a blue input, that will accept a mask. Two quick ways to add a mask would be to, so let's select the background and choose the mask type that you want to add. So in this case, let's hit the rectangle and you can see it cut out a rectangle piece. The other way to add a mask is to take the rectangle, drag it into the node area, take the output of the rectangle and put it into the blue input on the background. And that's gonna set the mask as well. So now that we have our rectangle cut out of the background, there's a few options we have. Um, you can select the rectangle in the viewer area. You can adjust the size, move the position of the rectangle. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So in the specter, we have some options for our mask. We can adjust the level that says how much of the mask is gonna take effect, so it's kind of a transparency option. We can add a soft edge that kind of blends the edges of the mask so it's not so sharp. We can add a border to the mask that's gonna put a border outside the mask area. And we can uncheck solid to create a border only mask. Let's put that back on and reset the border. And then down here, we have some options for adjusting the size and position. So you see as we move it around and adjust the size, these options are gonna change. Um, there's also a corner radius, so we can round off this and adjust the angle right here. So let's delete the rectangle, select background, and click the circle. And now we have a circle mask. You can adjust the width and height of the circle um, a couple different ways. If you grab the edge up here in the top corner, you can adjust the width and height at the same time. Or if you grab just the top, you can stretch the height, grab the side, you can stretch the width. So you can make an oval or a circle. And you can also use the controls in the inspector to do it. Okay, let's delete the ellipse or circle and check the next one. With background selected, we're gonna hit the polygon. And since there's no shape, it masks out everything. So if we wanna see our background, we can temporarily disable the mask by disconnecting the polygon from the background mask input. And there's our background. So let's select the polygon and we can create any kind of shape we want. So this is where we can custom design our own cookie cutter. Be whatever you want. And to get it to mask out, we take the output of the polygon back into the background and we've cut out a shape. We can use the shape tools up here to move the points around. You can use the handles to drag and make curves, um, change the point types. We can draw any kind of shape we want and the same options apply over here. We can do a soft edge or a border only. The next tool is the, uh, the B-spline tool. It works similar to the polygon, except it creates only curved lines. So we select the background, we add this one and we can draw our shape. And once we close the shape, the mask is complete and we can do the similar kind of adjustments that we did before. So we'll delete that. There's another built-in mask that is a triangle. So you can hit alt space and triangle and you can add it right there. 
But really you can create your own triangle by using the polygon tool. So we'll select background, hit polygon, and we just make our three points and they're connected and we have a triangle. So that's really easy to do. Those are the basic shapes, the cookie cutters that we can use to create more complex shapes. Now that we know the basics, we can combine masks to create more complex shapes. Let me show you how this works. We'll delete this polygon and add a circle. So we have a circle mask and move it over just a bit. And let's add another one. So the great thing about these masks is along this blue line here, you can add as many shape masks as you want. So we're gonna add another circle. And you can see we have our first ellipse right here and our second ellipse. So by default, these two are combined to create one shape. Any mask that's added after another mask has some extra options. So let's select ellipse two and you'll see there's a paint mode. We can change how this mask works. By default, the paint mode merges the two masks, but we can also do a subtract to have this mask actually cut a piece out of another mask. All sorts of different options. The average is kind of interesting where it combines them, or we can even do a invert. We'll go back to merge. Let's delete these off of here. Um, I'm gonna make a few quick shapes and let's see if you can figure out what I'm doing here. I'm gonna add a rectangle and connect that up. Okay, we got a cloud with a rectangle rounded off with a few circles. Let's make another one. We have a check mark, two rectangles, and one of the rectangles is set to subtract from another one. We can do a little bit more with this. What if, say if we want to put this inside of a circle. Let's select the second rectangle, choose the circle, and we have a big circle there. On the ellipse for the circle, we're gonna change the paint mode to invert. And we have a check mark and a circle. Okay, let's do a couple more. Add a circle, add another circle, shrink it down a little bit. On the inner circle, we're gonna turn off solid, increase the border width, and set it to subtract. And we have a target. So for this one, we're gonna, we need to make a square. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that it's kind of hard to make a square right here. Um, by default, the width and height of the rectangle is 0.5. That means the width is half the width and the height is half the height of the composition. So the rectangle is, I mean, it's nice because the rectangle will automatically adjust to the composition size based off of percentage, but it's difficult to get that exact square. So one way we can make sure we have an exact square is to put an expression in the height. So for height, we're gonna say equal width times 1920 divided by 1080. That's gonna make sure that the width is always proportional to the height based on the composition ratio. Let's make something out of this real quick. Change the angle to 45, add a circle, copy the circle, paste the circle, move it over and we have a heart real quick. Okay, back to our square. So when I was making shapes, I was just playing around with some different ideas. And this is kind of what led me into creating the shape shifter. I kind of built some a node structure and it looked really interesting. So I thought it might be an interesting component. But what got me there was I started out trying to make a star shape. Let's, uh, let me show you what I did. The shape shifter obviously has a lot more options in it, but this will give you the basics of how it's working. Let's say we wanted to make a five pointed star. Well, we don't have five points on this square. We, got we have four. So what if we took one of the points and duplicated that five times? Let's see what happens. In control space to add a node and we're gonna choose duplicate. So duplicate right there. By default, the mask is going into the mask input, but we don't want it to be a mask on the duplicate. We want it to actually be an input to it. So now that it's here, we can choose how many times we wanna copy this. Well, nothing is really happening right now, but we know we want five copies. So let's choose five, because we're gonna, we're gonna start out making a five pointed star. And then we just need to adjust the angle. The duplicate will rotate each copy by an angle amount. And there we go, we have some, uh, some star shapes starting to happen. As we add more copies, we want the duplicated shapes to be evenly rotated around. We can use an expression to do this. So all we need to do is for the angle, say that it equals, and this is gonna create an expression for us, 360, so 360 degrees divided by copies. As we increase the number of copies, our angle will change, so we'll do eight. Let's set the number of copies back to five. So that's looking interesting, but it's not getting us our five-pointed star. So all we need to do is after the rectangle, let's add a transform node. So we're gonna have a, a rectangle with a transform node. Same thing happened, we need to take the rectangle and put it into the input of the transform node and not the mask input. Now we just need to take the center and move it up. And look at that, we have a star. In the inspector, let's uncheck use, size, and aspect. And that's gonna allow us to adjust the X and Y size independently. We have these little corners sticking through. Let me put this in two viewers. So this is our rectangle. So what, what you're seeing here is these little corners here are from our, the pieces of our rectangle coming through. So all we need to do is mask that out a little bit. 
I'm gonna take the rectangle and we're gonna add another rectangle mask and bring it down like that. And we're gonna set this mask to subtract. And we have our star shape. Now we can actually come over to the star and bring that X in and have a really long spiky star or bring it way up and kind of have a, a flatter star. If you want to round the star off, we can go to our rectangle here and increase the coordinate radius and we have kind of a rounded star look. I was playing around with this and then I started moving this X and Y a little bit more and I started noticing an interesting effect. We can, we can take these shapes and move them around and a lot of interesting things start to happen. So now that we know the basics of this uh, the shape shifter, let me show you what it is and all the different things you can do with it. All right, let's delete out our nodes here. The shape shifter builds on what we set up with the star and makes it really easy to create incredible, crazy looking shapes and animate them. Some great stuff for motion graphics. The shape shifter macro has multiple ways to adjust position and rotation. It lets you scale the shape size, add a rounding border, and there's also a mode to show the border only. You can download and install the macro from my website, billjustice.com. I also have some preset shapes that you can download. You just download the file and drag it right into the node area and you're ready to go. Let's create a basic shape and see how it works. Let's start with the rectangle. We'll drag the rectangle mask into the node area and we'll hit one on the viewer so that we can see the rectangle. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Adjust the size. So let's add the shape shifter. We have the macro installed, so all we need to do is hit control space and type in shape and find shape shifter select it and add it. Let's connect the rectangle to the input on the shape shifter and we'll hit two on the shape shifter so we can see right there. We'll take the shape shifter and put it into our merge and hit two on the media out so we have our black background. Let's make some adjustments. So on the left, this is our mask and on the right, this is the output of the shape shifter. Okay, let's select the shape shifter. Um, first, I'm gonna go through each of the options to show you what we do and then we're gonna play around with some different shapes and options to see all the kind of different shapes we can create. The first option is the number of copies. Bring it down to four, and that's gonna copy this shape four times. When you're looking at it, you only see two shapes. There's actually four there, they're just overlapping. We can use the center position to move the shape. So let's take the Y and move it up, and you'll see there we go, we have our four shapes. So I'll make this one a little bit smaller over here. Select our rectangle. So those are our four shapes, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna put the center back to zero so they're all on top of each other. Um, let's go ahead and set that to Three. So there's here's our three shapes, one, two, and three. So they're three copies. The center shifts the position of the shape. So if we move it over to the left, this is the basic shape and you can see the copies. Reset it. The Y does the same kind of a thing. Let's go ahead and round off our shape. So let's select, select the rectangle, bring the corner radius all the way up. There's our three shapes duplicated. This is basically playing around with the position. Adjust the overall size of the shape. We can use the X size. Let's uh, actually bring it back to center right there. We can scale the shape in the X direction or the Y direction. We can also adjust the size of the short source shape to do kind of a similar thing. Back to the shape shifter. We can rotate the angle and you'll notice that if we move the shape up, it's gonna rotate around the center of the shape right there. There's another position offset. It does a similar thing, but it, you can create some different effects by just moving the pivot point and having it rotate around different areas. So it's just another way to create some interesting movement. I'm gonna come back to solid in a second. There's a border alpha that lets you set an alpha on the border because we can actually put a border around this and adjust the border size. One thing you notice with the border, it kind of smooths out some sharp edges. So you can see right here we have, uh, actually let me go put it back on the rectangle. Let's get rid of the corner radius. And we have those sharp edges. When you adjust the border size, it's gonna start smoothing that out. You see it rounds it out there a bit. Once we have the border set up, we can uncheck solid and, and that allows us to create a border only. The interesting thing about the border is it actually merges all the shapes. So if we move these together, you'll see that they separate and they come back together and they kind of merge together, which creates an interesting effect. The last setting is the color. I just tried to make it super easy to adjust the color. You can uh, choose a solid color or even set up like a gradient. Go to the rectangle, take the corner radius off, and reset all our properties here. Put it back on solid. Now, um, we'll turn the border off, take the border alpha all the way down. Now, one of the things you notice here is that we can, we can actually make some interesting geometric shapes. If we bring this X size up, let's look at that right there. 
bring those points together, and we have a hexagon. Let's do a, say five sides, adjust the X, bring this up a bit, adjust the X size all the way up. We have an upside down pentagon. We can flip it with this flip option right here. We can use the rectangle to round off the borders. And we have a pentagon with some rounded corners. All right, let's reset everything. This is where it gets interesting. We're gonna put it on um, uncheck solid, bring out the border alpha. And we can move some of these around a little bit. Create some interesting shapes. Right like that. And let's increase the Y size. Make it a little smaller. We're starting to get kind of a, little, a snowflakey look and we can adjust the angle to rotate things around. We just the, uh, just the X size. A lot of interesting things that we can do. Of course, all of this can be animated Okay, we're gonna reset everything. All right, let's try something super simple. We're gonna adjust our rectangle shape and change it up a bit. Let's add a uh, ellipse mask and bring it right into the middle of that rectangle. Actually, they kind of made it a little gear looking thing for us. Let's set it to subtract. And now when we adjust the shape shifter, we get a kind of an effect like this. And we can still adjust the position and move things around. Adjust the X and Y. Let's add in a circle. Connect up the circle, make it a little bit smaller. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a crescent. So we're gonna add another ellipse after this ellipse. Shrink it down. So let's uh, get the second ellipse. We're gonna offset it just a bit and set it to, let's say, subtract. And really what we have here is we have a crescent or a kind of a little moon shape. Let's go into the shape shifter and see what we can do with that. We can just play around with the position here and rotate the angle. Kind of, I like that shape there, kind of, it's kind of nice. So you want to see what this is doing, let's just set the number of copies to two. And this is what you have, so each one is being duplicated kind of like that. Go to four copies. We can make it, uh, let's, say, let's try 10. Put it back to solid. Let's go to two that we, so we can kind of see where they're at. Reset the X size, Y size, and rotation. And we're just gonna move it up just a little bit. Take off the border size, kind of sharpen it up a bit. Like size like that. And you can still adjust the uh, shape over here on the left if you want to change the way it looks just a little bit. Let's make a bunch of copies of this thing, 12. So then we got, we got that kind of a look. And we can rotate these just a touch, move it up, and scale it down. We got kind of that kind of a look. So really there's a lot of different things you can do. And honestly, I don't, you don't, may not even know the look you're going for, but if you just create some kind of a random shape and throw it into this thing, it gets kind of interesting. So just added a subtract rectangle here. So we have a little piece there, piece there. I cut it out with this guy and we have an interesting shape right there. So I just tried to run through some different examples. If you're interested, download it, throw some shapes into it and play around with it and see what you can get. You really almost don't have to know what you're doing. Just mess with some settings and some shapes start happening and play with it. Have some fun. Subscribe to my channel for videos about DaVinci Resolve, Fusion, and a whole lot more. If you like this video, click the like button below. I'd really appreciate it. I always love hearing what you think about my videos. So if you have any comments, questions, or just general feedback, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you.